Morning everyone. Hope I'm coming through loud and clear. <laughs> Maybe not loud, it's nice and quiet, nice and peaceful. It's raining. Liquid sunshine. And somewhere else, above these clouds, it's going to be sunny. <laughs> I always notice that, eh? when you go up on a plane, it's always sunny. Damn. Get away clouds. Where's that sun? Anyway, uh, I'm going to talk about today one of my other properties that I bought. Um, lessons I've learned from it and also uh, I think it's important maybe to talk about the one, th one thing that I've learned as well is your state of mind and how to change that in a heartbeat from sad to fired up uh, okay so I'll talk about that this morning so I'll name the, I'll name the property this time because I, I like it um, it reminds me uh, uh, looking back on it 6 to 8 den walk in Buckhaven. Boy, was that a property. That taught me a lot of lessons. Uh, I'll maybe share two of them with you. So, 68 Den Walk in Buckhaven. Um, I bought that oh, over 20 years ago. Uh, subsequently, you guessed it, sold it in eight years, two and a half times the price. Um, uh, it was a one bedroom flat, Artex everywhere. Jeez. What was that thing about, you know, people would just go about and do Artex everywhere? Um, they obviously got, you know, a, a wee mini course in Artex and, and then suddenly they decided, I could do your Artex and for you. Because um, <laughs> uh, this thing was like a nice, this thing was like uh, a pavlova on the walls, if that makes sense. It was just like, oh, geez, somebody had taken a trowel to it and just had some huge invention about how they would do Artex. And, um, luckily, they'd done it over the wallpaper. So it was easy enough to come off. Top tip for getting rid of Artexan. Um, scratch it and then put um, uh, wallpaper paste on it. And then it sits on it and it soaks in and then it's easier to come off. So that's how you get rid of Artexan. Uh, uh, easy. So back to 68 Den Walk. Uh, my most vivid memory of 68 Den Walk is. Uh, Jeez, I remember, um, I remember I became so driven, if that makes sense, maybe obsessed is the word, um, to get everything done in a particular set time. And I could, I could remember being really ill and I had a tenant moving in the next day. Um, ill to the point that, have you ever got that illness where you feel like you're in the twilight zone? And uh, and everything's like, oh my god, I just, I, I, I can't comprehend anything, um, I've got tunnel vision, um, I just feel so lightheaded, I feel exhausted. Um, that's kind of how I felt. Uh, that's when I realised I didn't, I don't have an off button. Um, I was completely exhausted. Um, but I still had to go and do it. I still had to get this property ready for this tenant moving in. It, I think it was nine or ten o'clock the next day. Um, so, I worked all night, I came home from a job, I was working, obviously as you know, I've said it before, in the industry as a, an accountant, um, came home from a job, uh, straight out, I had a quick bite to eat, straight out with a paintbrush, uh, cleaning materials, um, everything, you name it, I got a hold of it, um, to do the job and get it all finished for the tenant moving in the next day. Um, it took me till, now this is when I'm ill, so every single time, I, I just felt like it was in a constant daze, all the way through this. This is why I realised I don't have an off button. Um, and, and this is, you know that feeling? I know the feeling. You know when Johnny Brownlee, Alistair, had Johnny at the end of the triathlon, and he put him on his shoulder, because Johnny was like, oh my God, all over the place. You know, uh, delirious. That's how I felt. Uh, but I knew I just had to keep going. I had to keep going to do what I needed to do uh, to get the job done, to get the tenant moved in. And I worked until five o'clock in the morning. Jeez. <laughs> and I'm starting work at nine o'clock. <laughs> and, ah, I've got a tenant moving in at ten o'clock. I had a very sympathetic boss. A very sympathetic boss. And I mean that. Uh, and I could only, I could only, I can't even thank him enough to, to get me where I was. Um, he used to let me trade uh, my hours for my holidays. So if I needed a couple of hours to go and do something, he used to let me um, 
bank these hours and go and do something, if I told them, you know, um, I would then offset them against any holidays. So if I built up eight hours that I'd used sporadically over a period of time, then I would just trade them for a holiday and say, look, just have a holiday. Um, and that'll, that'll allow me. So I had a very, very sympathetic boss who was actually brilliant in that way, uh, Alistair. Alistair Patterson, he was brilliant. I did show him how to make money as well. So he, knew, he made a few bob <laughs> doing what I was doing. Um, uh, that was at Macintosh, EC Macintosh. Those were the days. Um, so yeah, I worked constantly uh, and, and was totally driven. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe refer to some notes because um, I go off the beaten track sometimes. Um, oh, right, okay, tenant refsing. Th this is what really hit home for me. Um, your sixth sense is probably the most important thing I would say for anybody. Sixth sense. Um, you get a gut feeling about someone. This is Silverburn again. Lovely. You get a gut feeling about something or someone. Um, 99 times out of 100, it's right. Trust your gut. Because your sixth sense actually picks up on all these subliminal messages or unconscious messages that you don't realise it's going on in front of you. Um, it's usually right. And that's why I realised tenant referencing was really, really important. Um, yeah, so that's what that taught me. Um, uh, and the fact that I didn't have an off button. I, loads of times I've actually worked. I think the longest I've worked continuously is for three days. Um, I remember lying down on one of the floors and um, I think it was 192. Um, uh, uh, I'll not tell you the property actually. <laughs> I think it was one. I, I remember lying on one of the floors just for an hour's sleep. Uh, morning, Jimmy. Just for an hour's sleep. Because I'd been working continuously and I'd been. Uh, hi, Grant. Uh, hi, Gavin. Um, I, I remember lying on one of the floors uh, just for an hour's sleep because I was exhausted. Um, we had to work continuously during the day um, at my job and then come out and work continuously at night. Uh, in my investment, property investment by toilet business. Um, so exhaustion was one of them. Um, yeah, okay, so tenant referencing is really, really important. Uh, you get that sixth sense. Um, yeah, you're, you're more than likely it's right. Um, your gut reaction about something is usually typically right. So listen to it. I think the book I got that in was Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. Um, fantastic book. Um, and also, the one I'm listening to just now, who is a real, I wouldn't say idol, because you don't idolise people, really, you shouldn't, um, Gerald Ratner. Anybody remembers Gerald Ratner of the Ratner Jewellers days? Um, he's renowned for your, your, you know, your, the stuff I sells crap, and then the next minute his business wiped out overnight. Um, it's called The Rise and Fall and Rise Again. Gerald Ratner. Uh, I used to read about Gerald Ratner all the time in the sun. Alan Sugar. Tiny Roland. Of, uh, and um, Ralph Harpin. <laughs> Obviously, clearly not for the things that Ralph Harpin got up to. But he, Ralph Harpin was in charge of uh, Burton's. Um, and I used to think, I used to, I used to read all their stories and he used to think, that's what I want to be one day. Uh, and and I was almost there, and I'll tell you about that another day. There was a decision, a defining moment in my life where it's like, are you going to go that route or are you going to go this route? Um, and I'll tell you about that one day. So that's, uh, yeah, so um, I'm listening to the rise and fall and rise again of Gerald Ratner. Um, he's, <laughs> he's on LinkedIn, I sent him a wee message yesterday. <laughs> um, and, and I have so much similarities um, with how he got to where he was and how he didn't have an off button as well, I don't think, and he became totally obsessive and compulsive about what he wanted to achieve in the jewellery industry. But um, success leaves clues, by the way. It's, you know, um, it's what you're going to learn from other people, and that's what I look at all the time. I look at people a lot more successful than me. I've never claimed to be a success. Success is a journey. It's never a destination. And the day you think you're successful is probably the day it's all over for you. Um, yeah, so Gerald Ratner, I've been listening to him. 
Um, I've been listening. I've been reading other books as well. So um, success leaves clues, and I like to learn from people who are a lot more successful than me. That's maybe one of the things. And finally, um, here I talk about the physical, the physical and mental state of mind. This is really important. So, what is the physical and mental state of mind? Tony Robbins talks about it. Um, we all feel sad, and there's a certain way you feel sad. I mean, how do you feel sad? Your mouth is like that, okay. It's not the greatest impression. Um, we all feel happy. Um, we all feel sad. Shoulders down. We all feel happy. Shoulders up, stand straight. Your metaphysical state determines your state of mind most of the time. Because what happens is if your physical presence and your body acts in a certain way it's the same condition as sad then what happens is your body itself releases the chemicals and endorphins to actually make you sad and that determines what happens up here in your brain and you could change that in a heartbeat and how I change that is music music on world off music's everything for me I was supposed to go to download last week with my daughter. Uh, download Festival, Iron Maiden, uh, Kiss, um, Airborne. Fantastic event. I love festivals. This is festival season. I'm, I'm, hi Billy. I, I'm festival season now and I'm, and I'm gutted because we were meant to go to Queen at the O2 in London this weekend, Tony and I. Uh, Queen and Adam Lambert and I was really looking forward to it but unfortunately it's been postponed. But that's back to my mental state of mind. I was pretty fired up this morning, always am, always get up early, um, so I was pretty fired up this morning, mental state of mind, and I thought, yeah, okay, I feel good, and that's fine, you just feel constantly good, you didn't need to get yourself hyped up where you're like a thousand mile an hour, that's maybe the wrong thing to do, because that's peaks and troughs, because then what you'll do is you'll crash and burn when you come out of that state, so you just constantly be on a nice positive state all the time, and that helps you immensely. They're out doing the course today. All right, buddy. Um, so that'll help you in your state of mind. But the one thing for me that did it, it sent me a wee bit hyper this morning, as you can tell, is the Eden Project Bastille. It's on red button. <laughs> and Bastille is playing at the Eden Project. And I switched it on and I thought, wow. And all these feelings, uh, morning, Sam, all these feelings of being at Glastonbury in the crowd um, watching Bastille at Glastonbury in the John Peel tent that was an event um, with the boys fantastic, right up the front and all these feelings, you can feel it now I can feel it and what, what's happening here is all these wee endorphins and all these wee chemicals hi Derek, are coming right into my system and going right to my brain and fire them up and that's what that's how you can change your state of mind it's, it's no easy let's be honest it's no easy because everybody used to tell me it Tony Robbins used to stand from stage and he used to go Jim you could change your state of mind um, you can, in a heartbeat I, pff, rubbish no you can't but you can you've just you've just got to want to there's a word, gotta wanna. Um, John and John Gillespie. Yeah, that gotta, gotta wanna <laughs> coined a phrase. <laughs> all one word, gotta wanna. Um, David and Reese Butler. Um, these are all people I used to I, I listen to in the past and I actually learnt from in my journey. And it is the success leaves clues. So the most important things is where do you want to be? How do you want to achieve that? Is anybody else where you where you want to go? And if that's the case, look them up. LinkedIn, Facebook, find out about what they're doing, how they got there, how their journey. You'd be surprised how many people will actually will actually share their experience with with you. So you don't you could learn by them, and you don't need to you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Jeez, I'm never one for reinventing the wheel. I just like making the wheel better and faster and more efficient and improve it. That's what I love about re no reinventing the wheel. It's just that I make a better wheel. 
Um, that's all I do, so I never claim to do anything or, or make anything up. Come on then. It's just a case that uh, don't reinvent the wheel, learn from somebody else, far more successful if that's what you want to do. Listen, if you didn't want to do that, you just want to coast on what you're doing, then fantastic. If you want to have a good life, you want to enjoy yourself, then again, you just look at other people that, you know, I quite fancy what he's doing. Um, Darren's another one. He has mountains in mind. Darren left his work years ago and thought, I've had enough of the corporate world. And, uh, and he says, I'm, I'm, I love mountains. I'm going to set up a mountaineering business, going up mountains. So I've been up Kilimanjaro with Darren. <laughs> I would never have thought I would have done that. Uh, we we're meant to go up Elbrus in July, which is the highest peak in Europe. Uh, but unfortunately, due to the circumstances, we can't get up there, up Elbrus to now. So that's delayed till next year. Um, and also uh, Everest Base Camp. I've been up there as well, um, but But if it wasn't for Darren, I would never have done these things. So thanks, Darren. Thanks for starting that business and uh, following your dream and your passion. Um, and yeah, I've waffled on far too much now. <laughs> Nobody would really want to hear any more. Tomorrow, I'm not really sure what property I'm going to talk about, but then tomorrow I'll talk about another property and what I've learned from it. Um, and uh, bye for now. Have a great day, everybody. See you later. See you, Derek. See you, Sam. See you, Billy. See you, Gavin. See you, Jimmy. See you, Grant. See you later, guys.